today's topic is just going to be a little bit of how I approach uh, photography and editing. I'm just going to give you guys some insights onto how I personally do things. I know there's going to be various ways on what other people do. Personally, I'm still learning, so I am not going to say I'm right about everything. And like, I'm sure there's different ways on certain things I could do better, but with most things, it's a learning process. You just trial and error, dude. And <clears throat> I guess another thing about this vlog would be, I just wanted to give you guys an update on, I guess, what products we're going to be reviewing. If you guys have any requests, post them below and we'll see what we can do. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Quarantine got me like pretty steady in terms of what I do from day to day. It's essentially the same. Wake up, eat, go to the gym, go home and shower, go eat. If there's photos or videos I wanna like practice editing, that's what I do for a couple hours. Then I go read, study, like pretty much like anything that pops up. And then right now what I'm like kind of focused on is just trying to navigate the realm of user experience design. I just wanna see what that industry has just because it kind of intersects all my interests or it is the intersection of all my interests. So I majored in psychology, so that's there's gonna be that aspect to it. There's design, so I can kind of implement my creativity into it. And then there's a the technical side and pretty much like I like everything technical in terms of just how things work. So I did a lot of IT work back in college and I don't know, there's gotta be a reason why I kind of favored that and like showed up to work pretty much every day. So hopefully this is the point where it's like the turning point where I can figure out what I freaking want to do with my life. All right, let's go ahead and get Let's give you guys the updates on what we got in store. We got Trade Union Supply, the plant-based paste, as well as their texture powder. Check out the approved list. The seal of approval from Harry has been put on their texture clay just because I'm low key in love with like how pleasant it is to use that product. Um, bro, the scent is just what gets me. We got what else we got? We got Dauntless Pomade and Wax Cream. You guys have raved a lot about the wax cream, so I'm excited to use that. And then lastly, a little bit of a left fielder. We got DS Laboratories High Performance Styling Gel. It's got a lot of like positive reviews and anecdotal ex experiences on what these products have to offer in terms of preventing hair loss, hair or stimulating hair growth or just overall maintaining like hair health. We'll see what it can do. Um, I don't have much experience in this, but I figured just gonna accept this opportunity and just give you guys insight to these types of products just because bro, I, I know more about pomade. I don't know about this stuff. So we'll just, I guess we'll just take a look. All right. We'll go ahead and, sorry, I'm just reading this. We'll go ahead and get to editing just because a lot of research is needed to do this review. Oh, well. All right. So the screen capture is going. We're just going to go ahead and get through maybe like three or four photos, show you guys what it's like from not what it's like, but what I do in general in terms of editing photos. Definitely not on the glamour side. It's just me sitting here pressing buttons. So hope it's helpful to somebody. I think the screen capture is going on. All right. So to put it out there, the shoot was about this lawyer trying to kind of rebrand herself to cater towards what her clientele is like right now. She works with a lot of um, small business owners, most of which are like gyms or like fitness uh, companies. And we just try, we're trying to 
market her or create an image that's more personable as well as like quote unquote gritty. I've done photos for her before and it was a lot of just very professional looking photos, just like in an office, in a conference room, sitting, folding arms, like all that. But now we're taking more of like a very flamboyant approach to it so that in a way people can relate. Um, I guess that's the best way I could put it. But let's go ahead and pick out the photos. So I picked out one up there. He's all right. All right, all right. This was pretty funny. We just like shot right next to a trash can or a dumpster. Man, why are they always cutting grass out there? All right, I like this one. Let's go ahead and do those three. So essentially what I just did was I, what do you call it, flagged it or start it so that you can kind of organize your photos on what you want to pick. I typically do the reverse where I flag all the ones I don't want and delete that just because I'm very limited on hardware or not hardware, hard drive space. And I don't know, I just have that preference more just because it's less of a mind shift of going back and forth between I need to edit this or I need to delete this. It's rather like, I'm just gonna delete all the ones that I don't like, and then I'll start editing all the ones I like. Then I'll go ahead and do a double check. But with this, essentially we're just gonna do three photos, hit the develop tab, and then you got your typical editing um, sliders and all that. So I got a couple of presets going on. Typically, very minor changes, but sometimes it works out pretty well. And essentially always have to edit these because no two situations are the same, at least in my experience, unless you're doing a lot of studio work, then I guess you can use that pretty well. Um, my thought process on this right now is that the darks are too dark the highlights are too bright on her skin and overall I like the f colors. I'm probably going to take these two things out just because it's kind of distracting. Might turn off a little bit of the yellow back here and then just kind of do a little touches here and there. <clears throat> so just line that up, decrease this part put up the blacks. You can see the car kind of going up. Shadows, highlights, let's bring that down a little bit more. And then we got your HSL slider sh shenanigans down here. Stuff so sensitive, like, bro. Sometimes I just can't control it. See. So it's very minor changes, but I kind of go back and forth to see what I like. Initially, the first like couple photos are really complicated just because I need to fix my posture. Jeez, there we go. Um, the first couple photos are very complicated just because I don't, honestly, I don't know what kind of feel I'm going for. And I just, know it when I see it, I guess. So we got texture. Interesting. Probably do a little bit of that. Clarity, maybe that much. Vibrance. That makes things pop out a little bit more. And then what I usually go towards is editing color. So this is the luminance, which you can kind of see what it's doing. It's essentially picking out all the orange and then you can adjust the brightness of a color, if that makes sense. So sometimes I bump this up a little if someone kind of looks a little bit too, I guess like too orange. The camera just makes things very um, apparent. So 
in a way it's not the same as what the eye can see it's just very like straightforward so like if your skin's orange you're going to be orange on the photo but in real life your eye kind of adjusts to it so you don't really notice that so probably gonna bring the oranges down slightly and then we got yellow so you guys see that it's changing stuff in the back and that's typically just things refracting or like reflecting and it's kind of annoying but you know not a ton of things you can do about that other than post-process it and then lastly what do i have probably not going to do split toning for this just because it's not essentially for just instagram funsies sharpening pretty standard if you guys are ever curious just literally just youtube this this is everything i've learned i've learned from youtube it's pretty interesting way or very different from when i grew up it's so easy to just like pop in a couple words and figure things out fairly easily sick so a lot of um lenses have distortion i'm shooting with the 85 typically the i guess like the longer the lens Typically the aberration isn't too crazy or not, not super long, but like, I don't even know what a good midpoint is, but the wider the lens, the more warping you're going to get. Just think of it like a fishbowl, the more um, wide of an angle, the bigger the fishbowl. And typically things that aren't in the center start warping off and you'll see people's faces like kind of extending or people's legs are like crazy long um with an 85 why people say it's such a good portrait lens is that it doesn't really have that as well as you're at a distance where it's a very flattering angle that the face isn't distorted in any capacity um if you guys take a look it's just like very minor so it's a lot on the outer edges so it's just kind of getting rid of that vignetting um that's pretty much it. I might add a little bit of vignetting back in because it took out pretty much everything. But in terms of like distortion, so if I mess with this, there's like barely anything, if you guys can see. Um, I wish I had an example. Let's see. Yeah, we got, we got, we got. Maybe this one? Oh, dang it. I don't have the files in that one. Do I have files in this one? Bro, who that cutie? So if you guys look at this, I shot it with a 28, which is a much, much wider lens. If you guys see the distortion, it's just like a lot more dramatic. So here's the before, and this is the after in terms of lens correcting. Um, it's very dramatic with wider angles. I wouldn't worry about it too much for telescopic, tele, whatever, telephoto lenses. Let's go ahead and get back to the editing part. So we got these three photos. Um, taking a look at this again, highlights are kind of dim pump it up honestly i think that might be it i might change things up again later probably touch up her skin a little bit but as of now it's pretty nice my hands are damn shaky damn it Ooh, it's too much sharpening you guys see it's like all the little dots and that's essentially what sharpening is doing so I'm gonna dim that down a little. The masking is essentially where things are gonna be applied. This is the, ah, damn, this isn't the most sharp photo, but it's cool. I'm editing on a freaking 27 inch. People are just gonna see this on like a tiny, tiny ass iPhone anyways. So it won't matter too much. So let's go ahead and fix this. 
walk through this very quickly just because we have an idea essentially play around with the shadows the lighting all that good stuff so right now i'm just gonna put the shadows back because once you bump it up too much the hair starts to get like kind of stringy and sometimes it just looks weird it doesn't look very natural so maybe at that point it's good white balance a little bit um i think that's good so i'm just copying and pasting all the settings um that way i have an idea of like what i have in terms of sharpening and what do you call it color correcting and all that good stuff but now that we're outside things are going to be a little bit different you just got to rebalance it little bit green maybe eight cool that's pretty much it probably gonna go back and do like a little bit of um what do you call it filters in terms of uh editing so that i can kind of emphasize her as like the subject so this kind of what i do for some photos typically outside just because i can't really control the light um that way it's like more balanced sometimes you'll have like way too much light on one side and then these are good tools to use just because you can really mess with it but typically i only do very little so that it doesn't look artificial in a way the least or the less things i do to a photo the better just because honestly the more you mess with it the more like edited it's gonna look nothing gonna top a photo right out the camera that's really really nice all you have to do is like adjust a little bit of the exposure contrast sharpness and then you're good don't really have to do much else so since we moved outside a little bit of the shadows have changed probably bring it back just a wee bit all right so that's essentially it guys super exciting yay but yeah so i have a ton of photos to go through right now we've got about 500 shots a lot of duplicates but again the more shots you take the better just so that you have variety whoops whoops Whew, that was like 18 minutes so there you guys have it nothing too exciting probably going to be doing this for another like two three hours and then essentially what i do is i'll upload it to google drive send it to the client and then see what they say they wanted things to be brighter, darker, more shadows, less shadows. Um, yeah, usually I offer like a revision, but sometimes you get people who are like super, super, super picky, but I haven't gotten that. So I'm kind of lucky there, but let's go ahead and call it. That's essentially what I do.